Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today we're making a pretty large sign for Christmas. I am using my Cricut, but first we're gonna make a swag that I wanna hang on top of the sign. So I thought we would start there and obviously this swag can be used for anything. I'm just choosing to use it on my picture. So what I did is I dug through my greenery from last year. I have a bag of it and I just picked out what I thought I would like. So I grabbed one of these bushes of the boxwood. This has a little bit of glitter to it. I think I bought these, most of this at Hobby Lobby. And then I had these picks, also the berries, but they are um, glittered boxwood, but they had some berries. So we're gonna use those. I may use some of this flocked lamb's ear and I think that's it for greenery and this time instead of gluing it we're going to use some floral wire to hold it all together just to change things up a little bit and I really don't have a base necessarily to glue it to um, right now so what we're going to do I already wired these together so I want to make this a swag so I cut them and I just wired them together. And then I decided I really want it full. So I'm gonna wire this one here. And what I wanna do is make sure we're even on both sides when you do a swag. Also, this is hanging on top of a tree uh, picture, so I don't want it overly heavy. So I have to take that into consideration as well. But I'm just gonna take this little piece of wire here I'm sure there's a million ways to do this, but I want it tight. So I'm just wrapping it around. And there will be a bow on here. And that bow will hide all this wire. And on this one, I had to wire a piece to make it fuller. But I'm not mad about that. So let's make sure we have these nice and spaced proportionately. I just want it to be full, but not overly heavy, if that makes sense. I'm just wiring this one on. I will probably go back and do a little touch of hot glue just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. So we have our base. That is how easy it is, guys. Done. But I do think I would like a couple pieces just for some texture of this flocked lamb's wool. And I am going to glue this in up here just because it's not going to go in the center. I want to give it also some dimension and some height. And again, this is not overly heavy. I'm just trying to find the matching piece to the other side. This is not overly heavy. I just don't want it to be super heavy. And I really haven't decided also um, if I'm going to attach it to the wall or if I'm going to attach it to the frame of the picture, but we'll see. I just want to make sure that sticks somewhere in there. And I think I'll do one more on each side. I already pre-trimmed these down. What I will do is strip off the bottom pieces just so I have a stem to glue. So do a little of that. And then I'm just tucking it in, right? Nothing to it. Everything looks so, I feel like intimidating sometimes. And then the reality is you just have to mess with it until it looks like what you like. And it doesn't matter if anybody else likes it. Now, I just made a simple bow here, you know, me and my bows, but I felt like this needed it. And I did put a piece of just greenery in the center. But this is just a small, ah, I'm out of glue, a small little bow to hide the center really, but also to bring some color because this is black and white, what I'm doing. Now, I did use my Cricut for this, and I know not everybody has a Cricut. You could use Dollar Tree lettering. You can also order these things on Etsy. If there's something that you want, reach out to an Etsy seller. They will cut it and sell it to you. I'm just waiting for this glue to dry, but there's the swag. That is so done, and I love it. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I will fluff my bows and mess with everything once I have the picture done. Let me bring it a little closer to you. 
but that's it. You could honestly put this over a door, sit it on a shelf, hang it over something that's already existing, and it just turns anything festive. And I love, I love pieces like this that I can utilize anywhere. All right, let me clean up all this glittery mess and I will bring out the picture that we're making. Okay, I have this very large canvas, which I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. And there's a bump, but that was just how it was laying. It'll go away. This is a 16 by 20. So it is 20 inches long by 16 inches wide or vice versa, depending on the orientation that you would like. I, oops, sorry. I am doing mine the long way for my painting or for my project. Now I get a lot of questions. How do I make vinyl stick? This canvas came in white. I did a coat of black chalk paint or two actually. And then I went over it with Mod Podge. Let me get my Mod Podge out. I don't know where I put it. Here it is. Just matte Mod Podge. And that will seal in the chalk paint and it will help it the vinyl stick. And then I will go over it at the end with another coat of that to seal in the vinyl. Now, let me move you here. You're just a little off center. Um, it's still not gonna wanna stick great, but it's going to stick. I'm going to make it stick. So that's how I prep the canvas. You can use any canvas you want, any size you want. You just cut your, your print accordingly. So here I have my you're not gonna be able to see what it says, it's white on white, but it says, believe in the magic of Christmas. So first I need to get this on some transfer paper. I would say light stick. You do not want anything that's going to be hard to pull off. I'm grabbing over here my two little scrapers that I have, because I, I wanna make sure all the bubbles are out and this is Paper Studio Vinyl that I'm using. I get it at, jo uh, no, at Hobby Lobby. Sorry, I'm trying to peel this backing apart. I like for this type of project, this Dollar Tree shelf paper, mostly because it doesn't have a high stick to it and it's a dollar. Sorry, I'm gonna be bumping this a lot because it's such a big project. Now this is, might feel like a little bit of an extra step, but I'm trimming the vinyl to be the exact size of my piece because I have laid down some registration marks and they're based on the backing vinyl here. They're based on this piece and I'm getting ready to take off. So I just need to trim it up real quick. Now I've got static involved, which is always fun, but that's okay, right? I think I got it all off. And I happen to know my registration marks are at the top. And while I have it on the back here, we're gonna burnish it again. And that's just rubbing that. Give me one second. We got it all down. Now what we're gonna do is pull off the letters. And you just wanna be very careful. Okay, got the backing off, and that didn't take too terribly long. Just making myself some room here. You always wanna have a pokey thing. That's my technical term. On this situation, you're gonna want a ruler, just to make sure. And then I'm bringing it up here to the side that I have my registration marks. This is gonna be the most challenging, not gonna lie, part. And that's going to be lining it up and making sure that it's flat, right? I'm not flat, I'm sorry, that it's even and straight. 
And by golly, I think I got it. Now, I'm gonna rub it this way all my little pieces and I'm using my fingers just to be a little more delicate then I'm turning it over and giving it a really good rub from the back on the canvas I really want it to stick to this canvas so hopefully all my preparations work and we're gonna see <sighs> And gently, we are gonna pull this down. You really wanna go at an angle and you wanna go slow and steady, especially when you get towards the smaller words. Like here, I'm missing an eye. I'm gonna have to reprint my eye. So I missed that and that's fine. I'll re reprint it. on the Cricut because I know what font I used oops, and what size. If you don't want to reprint it, you can just draw it in. Ah, you guys. I wish you could see the whole thing. Let me try it this way. But it says, believe in the magic of Christmas. But it's going to say, believe in the magic of Christmas shortly. Because I'm going to fix that. And then I have one more step. But let me print this I so we can fix that. And then we'll be back. Okay. I fixed in the, I actually just printed the both words. It's fine. I like it. Believe in the magic of Christmas. Now, the last thing I did is I cut out a whole bunch of these little starbursts and I'm just gonna place them like a sticker, right? So I don't have an eye, a dot on my eye here, I lost it, but now I do. So I just wanna go through here, peel off these little stickers and place them Where I think they will look look nice and I have all different sizes I didn't really plan out placement beforehand I just um, cut them so that I could you know at some point figure out where I wanted them to go once I had everything on the cutting board and you can do that that's the beauty of this you can put them anywhere you want. All different sizes, shapes. You could use any stars. You don't have to use stars. You could color the stars by cutting them out with different colored vinyl. It's, I mean, really there's no rules here. To this project you just want to get everything on the board in one piece so i think i need a couple more little stars and then what we're going to do is seal this on here with mod podge i feel like that's a pretty important step to make sure this vinyl doesn't come off i don't think it will i don't know that i've had an issue before with the vinyl coming off but something like this i really want to keep this for many years to come all right there we go everybody is done so literally <laughs> i won't make you watch me do it but i'm putting that much mod podge on here to seal it i'll come back and show you what it okay. looks like so this is what it's gonna look like when you get all your Mod Podge on. You just wanna make sure it's nice and evenly distributed. And so I'm using a chip brush and my bristles are falling out. You want to make sure before it dries that if there's any bristles, you've grabbed them. Because it'll, you'll see it when it dries. So this looks chalky, messy white. When it dries, it'll be clear black, but everything will be sealed in. 
Another reason you want to seal that paint before you do this step and put your stickers on besides it sticking better, if I had just chalk paint, these letters, and I went over with the Mod Podge, there's a good chance that paint would lift and cover up these letters and smear, and that'll be a mess. So you really want to seal that chalk paint in on your surface before you add your vinyl and before you paint over it or seal it. I'm using matte, you can use whatever Mod Podge you want. Another thing I've learned with vinyl, I don't like spray um, sealant for this. It does mess with your vinyl if you're heavy handed with it. So I just feel like it's worth the effort. I'm just trying to even out some of my brush strokes here. I shouldn't be able to see them. But also with the Mod Podge, it's gonna give it almost an oil painting feel to it, which I think is so cool. All right, stop messing with it, Lori. Done, I'm just gonna let this dry and then I'll show, oh, see, I have a bristle right here. All right, I think that was the last of the bristles. All right, done and done. Just gonna let it seal and then I'll show you the finished product. All right. This is what it will look like after it's sealed. Just got a little bit to dry. And this is just glitter all over the place. But that is what it looks like. Now, I decided I'm going to do, I changed it up and I took the bows off and I just put some poinsettias. And I want to show you how I'm going to attach the... Um, think this way. So what I'm going to do, I have this ribbon that I just glued on because I want to make sure that this, um, this swag hangs properly. And I don't want to, again, use a bunch of hot glue. So I'm just going to take that right there. And I put a hole in the center, taking my staple gun, and I'm gonna put a staple in there to hold that in place. Then I'm gonna take some twine. I wanna make a loop to hang it on, but I don't want it to hang tall. So what I'm gonna do is tie a knot here. That helps it not slide through the staple. And then I will tie a knot here. You can do a single, double, it doesn't matter the knot just helps and then I'm oops, throwing things on either side of this ribbon I'm just going to so that knot there just keeps it from sliding back through now if you don't have a staple gun use hot glue it's not a big deal this little thing here I mean I'm going to get questions came from Marshall's it's Martha Stewart, and it actually came with this big ball of twine that sits on it. And then they were selling the baker's twine separately. So I got the red, and it has some little silver flecks in it. All right, so I'm going to turn this around, get it all set up, and show you the finished product. Guys, I think this is going to be one of my favorites. It is so lovely, and I love the black and white. It goes with my Christmas decor this year, and it was a stash buster. All of these things, except the vinyl, which I purchased, the white, I had in my stock. It was just things I grabbed from my craft space to create this super fun, magical sign that's going to go in my living room, and I'm super excited about it. So I hope you find the courage and the inspiration from this to make something for yourself that you can hang and be proud of. All right, everybody, have a good one. I'll talk with you later.